Hi everyone, I'm Soft Seaside and welcome to this new video. Today we want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons again, specifically about the process of this drawing I made for my main D&D character, Neon. If you follow me on social media since 2021, you know that I fell into the hole that is called Dungeons and Dragons. And Neon is my very first D&D character that I'm playing with for two years. She's a way of the open hand monk, a water genasi, and also best girl. Right now our campaign is in its second act and our adventure is set in Waterdeep in the winter. My girl loves to show off her muscles, she's really proud of her physique and it's important to her that people know that she's hot. So she refused to wear a warm jacket for a long time but now she's failing her constitution saving throws all the times and is freezing to death. So now she has a new outfit that I have designed in this drawing. So let's dive in. As you can already tell this time we're gonna paint instead of draw. If you have seen my last speed paints, you know I'm a sucker for line art. So now we really want to change ourselves with this one. When thinking about a new outfit for her, I was thinking about her standing on a calm, snowy mountain surrounded by trees. And this idea reminded me of landscape paintings and that's why I wanted to paint this piece. It's fun to go out of your comfort zone for once in a while and I have mad respect for painters. I know this makes me sound like a hypocrite because I always fawn about strong line art but the truth is that you can like a lot of styles and still have preferences. Neon's design is based on the super cool colors of fighting fishes. Get it? Because she's a fish that fights. <laughs> and I initially wanted to give her Vietnamese clothing since I'm Vietnamese myself but I scrapped that because I wanted to show off her abs and arms. <laughs> I also later found out that only male fighting fishes have these really cool shimmering colors so I later decided for her to be trans. While Neon is my very first D&D character, she's not my very first D&D character design. My first D&D character that I came up with was a sexy, femme fatale, warlock tiefling lady with a tragic and complex backstory who is just 100% my favorite character archetype. But I got, I got so emotionally invested in her. I was too scared of my tiefling lady to die since I have never played D&D. So our DM for our first campaign helped me making two other characters who were bit simpler in their backstory so I could test out the game itself. The very first character was an angry Zundere half elfling, another favorite character type of mine, called Lunko. He was literally Felix Claudarius from Fire Emblem Three Houses but I quickly ditched him, I didn't like the idea and now he is an asexual, neurodivergent, non-binary bard that I'm playing in a one shot right now. I will also introduce you to Lunko at some point. <laughs> And the other character I made is my girl Neon. I wanted to make her a buff gay lesbian who is a sailor and she's a water genasi cause she's a sailor. <laughs> that was her whole backstory. <laughs> While playing with her she got a bit more backstory. She used to train in a temple for Elda, the goddess of water and silence, but was sent to the world to find her own way, whatever that means. And that's why she decided to sail the world until she got into a mission for her order where she would meet our party in a small village. And there really was not a lot of thought behind her character. A lot of it involved through playing her. First I wanted her to be a cool badass butch but now she's somehow turned into a soft sunshine crybaby shown protagonist who is literally me. Except she's buff. I will also go there. Wait for it. <laughs> and although she's supposed to be a very happy easy to go character she got a lot of angst. A lot of f***ed up shit happened to her in the first campaign. And the fact that I love angst and that I will try to increase the amount of angst if possible does not help her. In game she has a girlfriend called Valtura, my partner's player character. In our first campaign we heavily built our character's relationship and became a couple but now Valtura is gone for her own journey and they have a long distance relationship. Here's some additional background story that I came up with in my very first sessions which I discussed with my DM. When Neon was young she used to be a very sickly child. Her parents went to place to place to find a way to heal her from her disease. One day they found a fountain of Elder whose water is supposed to heal the sick and the ill ones. So they brought her to that water fountain and there the goddess Elder helped Neon gave her the body she always wanted of a healthy strong girl and since that day her parents 
parents and herself are devoted to Elda. Because she was healed by the magical water of Elda, Neon's body transformed into a fish girl <laughs> and gave her this very special appearance. She did her training in the Order and when she went to see the world, she sailed for two years on a merchant ship called the Soft Seaside, <laughs> where she met Captain Shiriel, who taught her the importance of freedom. By the way, I designed the whole crew of the Soft Seaside until this day. I couldn't show my D&D party how they look. All the designs of over 10 characters, because I don't want to spoil them, because they haven't been in the campaign yet. Yeah. I am planning on making separate videos to introduce my D&D characters. Yeah, what do you think about that? Right now I'm talking about her character anyway instead of her art. Anyway, while her summer outfit is very revealing, her winter outfit is inspired by Vietnamese clothing, specifically by Vietnamese monks. I got this idea from Katrin Strauss, a really great artist with unique character designs, great storytelling and a lot of humor, who also happens to be a D&D player with a monk character. The clothing design of her dragonborn monk Lucy, or Lucy is also based on Vietnamese monks and I found that was really cool, so you should really check out her art. I I gave Neon's clothing a lot of flow, I gave her a little scarf to make it more fluid. I think it suits Neon's fighting style a lot, being a monk, her bubbly and energetic character and the fact that she is a water genasi. It was very important to me though that one of her arms is still exposed, showing that her body is tough and that she can resist the cold, but also because she still wants to show off. So the idea was to make her a cool proper background and then I was unmotivated, I forgot about the story, found it again and decided to give up on the background. Okay, here we are. Backgrounds are really hard, okay? We really have to learn drawing them at some point, okay? It's the beginning here. I have three trees and the sun. That's, that's more than usual, yeah. And I also made the trees less detailed and desaturated the further they go, mm -hmm, yeah. Illusion of space. I know it. <laughs> yeah. Once again, I just picked the colors from a character reference sheet and used some blender modes for the layers and therefore I was once again not content with the colors. I think it's really important to plan your drawing beforehand. That's something I should learn. The next speed paint that is planned does use a color palette for once, so stay tuned for that. By the way, for some reason, my D&D characters often tend to have blue and yellow in their color palette. And blue is one of my favorite colors, but I got really fond on like a warm yellow or gold. I also made a little costume change. She used to have golden wristbands in her design, but I changed it into golden rings to resemble the ring that holds the yellow cloth together. And she recently got a plus one magical quarterstaff with golden rings, so I think that would suit her better. She used to have the staff of bird calls, which can magically produce bird sound. It was a lot of fun using this one, but it always bothered me that it doesn't suit her aesthetic so much. And her stats are not that great, so I'm very happy to have a strong weapon now. And here's a finished drawing, or painting, I guess. I'm proud of the drawing, I really like Neon's face in here and I think the painting is really cool. I'm pretty bad at painting traditionally and digitally, but it's a lot of fun, so I'm glad that this one turned out nice. But once again, I guess I kind of have to plan out what I want to draw in the first place and I still have to learn color theory, but yeah. How did you like this video? Do you like this kind of loose talking where I just talk about the topic of a drawing? Or do you prefer when I talk about the process of a drawing that I made? Like what techniques I used or what I thought while I make this drawing? Just like in my previous speed paints? I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Once again, if you have any tips for me, especially painting tips, you can definitely tell them in the comments. Just be respectful and nice, but I greatly appreciate them. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing to see more. See you in the next video. Bye!